Will I ever see you again? Know any indigenous people with a compelling story to share? Imagine being born with club feet, deaf in both ears, and borderline retardation. Being taken out of your home by social service agency and brought to residential school. One, two. I'm guessing you were you were mad and upset that. Um, um, the people took me away. Uh, do they take any of the other kids away? Yeah. Do they take any other kid, like Norman, or or just no. me away? No. No, just just me. So then, how did you? First thing I had TV, eh? Oh yeah. But then when I was there, I didn't even have TV. Yeah. And they took yeah. you away for nothing. Yeah. In turn, the court hands you back to the social service agency. You get placed into the foster care system and brought to the only foster family you remember, the Williams. Just picture not being able to walk, so you get carried up the front steps of the Williams's home. Imagine getting hit at and yelled at all of the time, because that is what went on in the Williams's home. What would you do? If you got kicked out of your home at the age of 13 years, because that is what happened to me, then your social worker could not find another foster home for you. And after she talked with her supervisor, they came up with putting you on independent living at the age of 13. Imagine the horror, frustration, and anger you felt. The question that lingered in my mind is this. Why was I not returned to my family? Envision this. Two weeks after being on my own, I was kidnapped, raped, almost killed, and left for dead up in the mountains, stark naked. Now, ask yourself this. How would you forgive and let go of all that was done to you in your life? Thankfully, I have learned to do this, and today I am a filmmaker, I am focusing on the self-reliance and independence of the indigenous people by creating documentary films that highlight students and professionals. Do you see yourself being involved in this project? Hi, I'm Keely Donaldson. I'm the publisher of North Island Compass, which is a publication of Kiki's Printing here in Campbell River, British Columbia. I'm very pleased to talk with Bill Williams today, and we're so excited to be doing a feature story in our second issue about Bill and what he's accomplishing. There's not enough success stories out there, and it's a part of leadership to be able to show people that they can do whatever they put their minds to and be able to get through the next part of their chapter to continue on their journey. We look forward to working with Bill. It's so great to be able to help the First Nations people develop their own businesses and I'm very glad to be a part of their success. So I right, thank you very much yeah. and I'm behind you 100% in what yeah. you're doing. You're a marvelous person and I'm really glad I met the both of you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. And uh, I wish you all the best and, and uh, Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas also. Yeah. Merry Christmas also yeah. to all of you. I'm from the Gold River um, Reserve, and I'm working on a documentary called The Indigenous Success Stories, where I'll be filming those people that are successful in the professional fields, be it teachers, doctors, uh, and uh, also want to interview um, people in the film and television industry. I want to interview uh, students, especially, to encourage them, um, after watching this documentary, that would encourage them to 
move on with their lives, that uh, there is hope. Just looking at my life, where I was born with club feet, deaf in both ears, and borderline retardation, um, I was raised in foster homes, and foster home, uh, there I was, I had uh, feet operations at both feet, and ear operations, and uh, I was able to walk straight uh, when I was 10. And then when I was uh, 12, it was the first time that I heard. And um, I, um, after relearning what other students had learned already, um, I just uh, found it difficult to really um, um, move on with my life. And um, um, I was a troubled child, and as a result, I was um, kicked out when I was 13. So I was um, on my own since I was 13. And from that, um, uh, about two weeks after that I got kicked out, I was um, um, kidnapped. Uh, by man, raped, and almost killed up in the mountains behind the reserve in Port Alberni. And he left me for dead. And um, uh, when we went to court, um, the guy said to me that, um, well, I didn't kill you up in the mountains, but I will kill you when I get out. And I uh, lived my, fe my life in fear. And this is where I want to encourage the viewers that they, they should not have to live life in fear later on in life is that um, I forgave the fellow and I went with my wife uh, behind the reserve in Port Alberni up to the mountains where this happened and I uh, reached out my hand and I said I forgive you and I let you go. And it's almost as if his spirit left me and I lived, you know, lived my life in peace. But I think more importantly, what really encouraged me in life is that um, I became a Christian when I was 15. And I believe God always had his hand on me throughout my life and whatever I did. And that uh, several times I tried killing myself uh, when I was younger. And that um, um, God was always there and he sent somebody. When I hung my, tried to hang, when I hung myself, there was a knock at the door and I, so I went to answer the door. And I always said to myself, don't they know I'm trying to kill myself? 